By the 24th of January, 40% of the coalition's air sorties were diverted to scud hunting. And special forces like Britain's SAS were sent into Iraq to try and destroy the launchers from the ground. The Scud attacks on Israel went on, but still they failed to break up the coalition as Saddam hoped. In a further attempt to weaken public support for the war, British pilots John Nicholl and John Peters, shot down on the first night, were paraded on Iraqi television. They had been tortured and were forced to denounce the war. This war should be stopped so we can go home. I do not agree on this war with Iraq. The pictures provoked condemnation across the world and only inflamed Western public opinion against Saddam. Saddam was unable to prevent the air campaign systematically destroying his army. So two weeks after the air war began, he ordered an attack that would force the Americans into the risky ground combat they wanted to avoid. At around 8.30 p.m., Iraqi troops broke cover from their positions here in Kuwait and headed down there towards the Saudi border. Their movement was watched by an unmanned American spy plane feeding pictures back to its operator. What do we have Holy here? Crow. Let's see what they are. Man, this is something. Here we go. Closer, closer, and uh, 2,253 hours. They've crossed the border. Cross. in Saudi Arabia. King Fahd's going to be pissed. Fahd Baby's going to be pissed. He's, he's going to be hot. Yeah. The coalition had complete control of the skies over Kuwait, but not a single aircraft was close enough to stop the Iraqis. Where's our air? This is ridiculous. Frickin' bomber couldn't ask for any better target than that. The Iraqis took the coalition by surprise. They met little resistance and seized the Saudi town of Kafji, about 10 miles down the road. Troops from America, Qatar and Saudi Arabia now had to fight their way into the city to regain control. The armed with missile off strip down range. Take that bad boy out. And when air support finally arrived, they had a decisive advantage. I certainly would not want to be an Iraqi troop up there. Aircraft are swarming over that battlefield like gnats. After two days of fighting, coalition troops finally regained control. An estimated 38 Iraqis were killed and hundreds more captured, but the coalition had suffered too. In their first taste of ground combat, 43 coalition troops, including 25 US Marines, were killed. For some, it had been a sobering experience. I never expected that kind of fear, but you have to overcome it. Because if you don't overcome it, it's, it's just like being defeated without actually being killed or anything like that. But with Kafchi back in coalition control, world attention turned once again to the air campaign, which was now in its fourth week. Television audiences across the world had become hooked on the extraordinary footage being beamed into their homes around the clock. It was all part of the public relations war. After their experiences in Vietnam, American commanders knew that unfavorable coverage might damage public support for the war. So they carefully managed what was actually seen by the watching world. 
Splash. Good. That was an excellent splash. The American general who commands all the Allied forces in the Gulf has said that Operation Desert Storm has been going according to plan. The aim was to portray the war as clinical and bloodless, with so-called smart bombs making surgical strikes. I'm now going to show you a picture of the luckiest man in Iraq on this particular day. Keep your eye on the crosshairs, right through the crosshairs. And now, in his rearview mirror... <laughs> but the laughter was about to end. In the early hours of February the 13th, 1991, two stealth bombers flew towards the Al Amaria bunker in the suburbs of Baghdad on what was supposed to be a routine mission. Shortly after 4.30 a.m., they released two laser-guided bombs. Exactly as planned, the bombs dropped down a ventilation shaft and exploded deep inside the bunker to maximize destruction. The trouble was, it was packed with over 400 civilians. American criminals! What are you? What was the war? What was the war? Hundreds had been killed, many of them children. Pictures of the disaster were broadcast around the world. I lose my wife and my children. Is that fair? Nobody, nobody says something to stop this massacre. It was a terrible mistake. Coalition air planners had believed that the Al Amaria bunker was being used by Iraqi commanders, not civilians. These images of so many dead civilians and their distraught relatives shattered the myth that this was a bloodless war. And it forced Schwarzkopf to curtail the bombing of Iraqi cities for fear of causing more civilian casualties. But the Iraqi army got no such reprieve. The air campaign had battered Iraqi targets for over a month, and still, Saddam had not withdrawn his army from Kuwait. Schwarzkopf knew coalition ground troops would soon have to drive them out, and in preparation, he intensified the airstrikes against the Iraqi front line. There was nothing smart about this bombardment. Old-fashioned planes, like the giant B-52s that had flown over Vietnam, dropped old-fashioned explosives and napalm on the Iraqi positions. When a canister of napalm hit the ground, it exploded in a mass of burning jelly, which incinerated anything it touched and sucked the air out of everyone's lungs within 50 meters. Coalition airmen flew around-the-clock bombing missions attempting to destroy 50% of the Iraqi armor. We're trying to get ready for the ground troops going in. So we're really trying to hit them hard in order to clear it out for the ground troops. We sent out three or 400, 500 bombs a day. Some of them weigh 1,000 pounds a piece, so it's just it's unreal the time it's going out here. In retaliation for the coalition's continuous aerial bombardment, Saddam Hussein unleashed a new kind of destruction. He ordered the Iraqi army to blow up the oil fields of Kuwait. It created scenes of apocalyptic devastation. It looks like what I envision hell would look like. The country of Kuwait is burning. Hundreds of wells were blown up, sending a wall of flame and smoke thousands of feet into the air. 